Yo, what up, though? Welcome back to the channel. On the way to bike night in Royal Oak before the game come on tonight. Got a big topic today. Oh, I don't know what should we gotta talk about today, fellas. I'm taking a kind of a slow way to the meet, so what's y'all? What's what we gonna talk about today? Um, getting in the ride. Let's talk about getting in the ride. And everybody that I be around always talking about getting a bike. Everybody want to get a bike now. I think once once one of your friends get a bike, it's kind of like it's like an itch you get to join them. So we gonna take talk about that today. So yeah, uh, first and foremost, I know this is probably a, a gray area, but I would suggest one of the first steps is taking the MSF course. I took mine even though I had like some prior experience of riding, but I watched everybody in that class who had like never be, been on a bike before. They were able to learn and grasp the concept in no time. The teachers was like excellent, bro. I'm not gonna lie, the teachers was able to teach them in no time. Only one person failed a whole day. But other than that, everybody was, everybody was A1 on them. So that's the first step. Go take the MSF course, learn how to ride. But one thing I would suggest before you take the MSF course is to go find a bike. Get you a used bike. Don't go buy nothing new because your chances of dropping it is higher. Uh, when I had my first bike, um, I never dropped it myself. I let somebody else ride and he dropped it. So me personally, I didn't think I only rode for like a year. So I didn't, maybe it was just cause the time was shortened and I didn't drop it, but I'm not saying that I'm immune to dropping a bike. It just didn't happen to me. But I would suggest starting on something, getting a used bike, something small, like a, a 300 or 400. Cause you, I guarantee you, it, you you're gonna get tired of it. So get one used, that way if you drop it, it's not that big of a deal. Your parts not gonna be uh, expensive. And then that way if you drop it, you can fix it, and get back up, and try again. Or you might decide it's not for you. And then that way now you're not out of a lot of money that you done went and got a, a new 600 or a 1,000 or 750 or something like that. You're gonna spend all that money on, which that's the second part of this conversation. If you've never been on a bike and you don't know throttle control, a, a 600, and not gonna lie, it's a R6. I hadn't rolled in years. I got back on this thing and I ain't gonna front. I was a little timid. I was intimidated by the bike. Stop being a bitch and come on. As I hadn't rolled, ridden in a while, I had to get everything back under control. But the thing that I did understand is I rode a bike before, so I kind of understood throttle control and I knew not to be a dumbass and kill myself because it's nothing to just turn this little fucking handle and go from zero to a hundred and you will loop the bike you'll kill yourself is it, is these things real fucking dangerous you know despite how fun we make them look it's still dangerous because you just out here in the elements come on make up your mind you know you're going all right but So yeah, start on something small and use. That way if you drop it, like I say, it ain't gonna cost you much. The way you can get the grasp of everything. But uh, another thing you do have to ask yourself is, before you get a bike, are you, you know, are you an adrenaline junkie? I'm a cat, I'm a cat. That's what I thought you would say. Which I consider myself an adrenaline junkie. I love to get on the freeway on my bike and open it up, leaning a couple inches off the ground, like that shit get my blood boiling. 
but I do it within reason, within my limitations that I know that I'm capable of handling the bike. I'm almost certain I could probably push my bike to a further limit, but I'm still kind of intimidated by it, which is good for me, that way I don't kill myself. And so the reason why I suggest getting a bike like in the same uh, time frame as taking the MSF course is because once you take that class, y you gotta get on the bike, or you gonna lose the you gonna lose the the, the things that they teach you. The, the, the things that they teach you, you gotta get out here and ride. You gotta practice it because if you go to the course and then you go shopping around for a bike, two three months later you get a bike you're not going to remember all of the stuff they was teaching you. So it's, it, I would suggest get the bike, then get the class. If you can, if you got somebody around you that already know how to ride, have them like, start learning on your bike before you even go to the class. That way you don't go there as a complete rookie. Another element of this you got to take into account is the maintenance on the bike, and basically what that entails is the expenses. Bikes take a lot of maintenance. Well, not a lot. You just gotta stay on top of your maintenance for your bike to run tip-top shape. And you don't really wanna play around riding on no bike that is something wrong, you, you know what I'm saying? You wanna be out here, you on the freeway knowing triple digits and something go wrong and your life on the line. Like you don't even wanna play around like that. So I would suggest making sure you have an expendable income to make sure you can maintain the bike. You gotta constantly keep the chain cleaned and lubed. Oil changes every two two thousand miles. The oil change, the, the oil and everything is a little more expensive, but you don't need as much. Like this bike takes two and a half quarts. Like, I think I just did a full tune-up on this for like all of the the materials. It's probably like a little over a hundred dollars. Tune up oil change, flush the radiator. I still need to bleed my brakes. I've been procrastinating on that. That's a different story. But you gotta keep up on that. Then we ain't even getting to gear, gloves. You gonna wanna have gloves. You gonna have shit hitting your hand, tearing your hands up while you riding. Um, I would suggest getting some riding pants. If you don't get leather, get some riding pants. These are MBT pants. Link in the bio for the discount. Shameless plug, I know. Yeah, but still get you some riding pants. Get you some leathers. Make sure you protect yourself while you out here riding. The last thing you want to happen if you go down is you ain't got no skin left on your body because that's really what's going to happen. You're going you to slide. And this C-Man ain't friendly. Um, helmet. Helmets range from 150 to $1,000. Um, gloves, I think these gloves was like $40, these pants was $200, um, yeah, I got on some jewelry, I got on some j shoes today, but I, I got uh, a pair of uh, actual motorcycle racing boots, you gonna have to have some type of boot for your MSF class, those is almost $200, um, I got on an armor vest, that was like $100, I got an armor hoodie, that was a hundred and something dollars. I had to put new tires on this bike when I got it. That was like eight hundred dollars. You going if you in the if you get in the bikes, you almost certainly probably a car guy. So you gonna want to still keep up with the same thing and personalize your bike. So you gonna want to change the grips, the levers. All of that shit add up. Little, little tools and fuels, it adds up. I'm pretty sure I done spent just as much on this bike as I spent for it. I'm, I know I'm in for over 3,000 just on accessories and maintenance on the bike and keeping up with it. And that's just since I bought it in April, at the end of April. And so you gotta have an expendable income. Then on top of that, yeah, they don't take a lot of gas, but they don't hold a lot of gas. So if you getting on your bike and you getting on the freeway again, you triple digiting it all the time, guess what? 
you gonna be needing to fill up a little bit more so them little seven eight nine ten dollars guess what they gonna add up on you quick yeah you're going a uh, day and you all riding with you and your homeboys whatever and you will go through two tanks easily and you won't even realize it then when y'all on the bike y'all chilling you're gonna go places you gotta go somewhere to eat you gotta have that expendable income so what else uh do i need to cover we went over uh learning the type of bike you should get like i say i definitely do not suggest nothing over and you can start on a 600 you just you just gotta trust yourself if you do that and yeah, there's people that started on thousands but hey to each his own if you can start on a thousand and you can learn that's that's good i salute you and me personally when i got back in the ride and i knew i only wanted a 600. i wasn't even about to take no chance so we cover a type of bike cover the cost keeping the maintenance up and gear really don't think is another topic to cover on that really that's just pretty much it just you know get all them things aligned and then that's, that's like I say yeah that's pretty much it this topic been covered I'm pretty sure like over a thousand times on YouTube but this I had to get my personal perspective and opinion on it and that's just what I think like just you know what I'm saying get into it this is a man I love being on my bike it's the it ain't nothing like it and just the, the freedom and enjoyment of it just being out in the elements it's like um you know what I'm saying you got a car and you got you drop the top that's almost as similar like that Jeep right there if they was to take the doors off and the everything off that is that that freedom feeling that like you in the outdoors on a motor some type of motor vehicle that's what this shit is about i'm testing out a new setting on my camera too i got the rock steady plus on today and see how this gonna look i don't know if y'all saw the uh jixer bro video i'd uh link it uh ride out but i was dumb day to do it i tried turning um rock steady off Gotta get in the higher gears. Thing getting hot. I said next time I'm taking a freeway here and dealing with this street. This thing up to 200 degrees. I'm just cooking my leg right now. And then that's something else. I'm glad that just happened. I hope y'all saw that. That's another thing about riding a bike. You got to keep your head on a swivel at all times because people just do stupid shit like that and they just cut you off. And it's like they don't know the type of risk they putting you at. Because I could have just glanced and looked somewhere else, which would have been my fault for not paying attention. But it's not like being in a car, like, okay, boom, I'm going to slam into the back of you at 30, 40 miles per hour, boom, both our bumpers are going to be fucked up, probably get an airbag go off. Yeah, okay, we fine. You know, a little uh, whiplash, maybe. When I'm on a bike, ain't none of that. The brother's behind me. So, yeah, people don't take into consideration. So, you got to... Basically, like you gotta keep your head on the swivel. If you if you're real attentive as a bike rider, it actually make you smarter. Like, cause you gotta think like a mile a minute. Like you don't have no room for error, like whatsoever. A blink of an eye can change your whole day. Road conditions change quick. Like, like right now, it's a construction area. It could be some damn gravel or something somewhere. And that shit, gravel and slow speeds, to be honestly, on a bike is, is slow speed on a bike is like one of your worst enemies. Especially if you don't know what you're doing. Like, that's where most, uh, most crashes occur at lower speeds. 
is somebody not knowing what they're doing and locking up that front brake. Because if your bike is lean and that wheel is turned when that front brake lock, the bike is going straight to the ground. It, I hope you're strong enough to hold it up because it's going down. It's a couple, that's something that they cover in the class. But yeah, it's just attention, attention, attention all the time. Make sure you know what's going on around you. A lot of people ride without mirrors. They to each his own. I use my mirrors the same way like I do in my car. I'm always paying attention because I don't want nobody coming up, slamming into the back of me. I gotta give me a wall spot today, that way I got somewhere to sit on. Never good when you push in a car. Got a couple bikes out here. It's early, so of course I'll cut y'all back in when when they get live.